Welcome back into our study on what is essential Christian doctrine. What is essential Christian doctrine? Today we come to study double verilies. Double verilies. What is double verilies? Double verilies are those double truth. These are double truths that get repeated. Now we know what they are, we just didn't know what they were called. For example, depending on what version of the Bible you're reading it, if you're reading the King James Version, it would say, it would say truly, truly, okay? Verily, verily. Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today. And I want to ask you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 18. The Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 18. Now, and, and you need to understand why this is important. First, let's read the text. Now, there are numerous texts that say verily, verily, or truly, truly. And so you're going to see these kinds of terms all the time. And people just think that they're just a cute little literary device. There's more to that. So let's read the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 18. Truly, truly, I say to you, this is Jesus speaking. When you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now, in this particular text, it's not as important at the moment. At the moment, to get into the details of the text, I want to draw your attention to double verily, truly, truly, verily, verily. And it depends on what language you happen to be listening to me in, and you will see a similar pattern in your language. Now, so let's try to explain what this is. Okay? And what, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to give an explanation, and I'm going to try to give an illustration, and then an application to this sub-doctrine that is called double verities. Now, 25 times, can you imagine this? 25 times in the Gospel of John, Jesus uses this expression, verily, verily, truly, truly. And why does he do that? Because he wants to introduce a concept that the hearer, those of us who are hearing the word, okay, might have difficulty in believing. Because you have to remember that God does not think the way we think. We don't think the way God thinks. Right? So his, his, God's standard of truth many times is not the standard truth by which we live our lives by. So Jesus had to speak in a way that would capture the attention of his hearers when he said, truly, truly, verily, verily, because he knew that they were about to have a little difficulty in understanding or believing what he was saying. So every single time you come across that term in the Gospels of John, verily, verily, or truly, truly, depending on how it's translated in your language, it, your antenna should go up and you should say, hmm, something important is being said to us here that I may struggle understanding. So let's look at this. And this is what we would call an intensive expression. This is an intensive expression. It would be tantamount to me like raising my voice really loud to you and, and I would come in your face. That's an intensive expression. I want to get your attention. Listen to this carefully. It's in this kind of a mode that we find this, this phrase truly, truly, very, very being used. Okay. So the expression emphasized that what was stated was true just as God is true. So Whatever statement of truth is being made is at the level of the person that God is. He is true. Now, we see this in the Old Testament, okay? A person who might be doubted would use such an expression to insist that he was telling the truth. So in the, in the Old Testament, okay, we would see it another way. For example, let's, look, let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 5, verse 22. Numbers chapter 5, verse 22. Now we see it another way, but it's the same thing as we find in the New Testament. When you hear the words, truly, truly, or very, verily, look at this. Let's read Numbers chapter 5, verse 22. And this water that brings curse shall go into your stomach and make your abdomen swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say what? Amen and amen. Do you see how that's expressed in the Old Testament? It's a double amen. 
in the New Testament, we would get a double verily. Now, how would we try to uh, illustrate this? And by the way, we need to illustrate it biblically, right? I don't want to use a, an external uh, example outside of the Bible. So let's look at it. Let me ask you to turn your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to be looking at verse 15 and 16. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Let's look at this together. Now, in the New Testament, if you remember... Peter confessed that he had found some of Paul's epistles really hard to understand. When Paul wrote, Peter sometimes he found that it was difficult to understand what Paul was saying. Nevertheless, he what he did, he accepted. He accepted them with other scriptures. Uh, even though he struggled to understand sometimes when Paul was speaking, he accepted it at the level of other scriptures. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. Let's read. And regard, and he goes, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which he untaught, the which the untaught and unstable might distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. It's for that reason that we see this concept of double verity, because it may have been misunderstood, because these people necessarily, they didn't necessarily have, uh, according to verse 16, right? They were untaught and they were unstable. So. What would be the simple application of how we would approach in taking these double verities? Well, well, I think that as a Christian, when a Christian approaches his Bible, he should do so in the way you should do it also, is with a commitment to believe the whole Word of God, not just part of it, and clearly not the part that you understand and the part that you do not understand, you just categorically reject it. You can't do that. And you should not do that. So that's why every time you see very, verily, or truly, truly, okay, that's, that should let you know you might have some difficulty in believing and understanding this and even accepting it and applying it to your life. So you need to be very, very careful when you come across Scripture that you do not understand, not to categorically reject.